Hello friends, myself Dr. Sonal Chhabda. Today we are going to discuss about issues of excess and retention for children. Now which category of children today we are going to discuss is urban, poor and deprived, geographically remote children and working children. As per the constitution of India, the government of India is committed to providing a free and compulsory education to all the children in the age group of 6 to 14 years. Now why this has been made essential is because we all realize the importance of education in the lives of the children. Every individual, whether belonging to which caste, color, creed, sex, every child deserves an education. Education is not something which is a leisure thing. Education is not something which should be an optional thing. Education is something which is essential. So education is basically a fundamental right and the government of India has been making all kinds of constitutional provisions also for the same. Even with number of constitutional provisions, even with number of efforts which the government has been making in the direction. However, even after 70 years of independence, equity is still an important issue in school education. Why is this happening? We need to really understand what are the reasons behind the same. Now, the government has been making efforts for increasing the access for retenting the children in the school. What kind of efforts the government has been making? Let us just discuss that. A large number of primary schools have been opened throughout the country. The number of schools has always been rising. The government is aiming to make education accessible to all the children. Secondly, there have been schemes like free instructional material, other schemes like midday meal, distribution of school uniforms, almost free education, assistance to girls from the tribal areas. So this is another effort which ha the government has been making in this direction. Then there have been specific programs like DPEP, otherwise known as District Primary Education Program. Now all these efforts have been making, have been continued for a long time. But all these efforts were continued on a large scale under the umbrella of Sarv Shiksha Abhyan. Even with Sarv Shiksha Abhyan happening, even with so many efforts happening in the government direction, even with so many incentives being provided to children, still uh, there is a large chunk of population of children which is still out of school. Now let us understand what kind of children are still marginalized or are still aloof from education. These are children from the scheduled caste, number two children from the scheduled tribes, then there are working children, then there are children from special uh, children with special needs then there are children belonging to the migrant labors then there are children who are working they are rack pickers there are other sections of the population of children who are still not able to reach to the school now we need to discuss we need to understand and we need to make efforts so that all these children who are still out of school after so many years we can bring them to school in this session we are going to discuss the urban poor deprived children the working children and the geographically remote children. We are going to understand what category of children are under these sub categories and what kind of efforts can be made by the government or otherwise which can help in increasing the access and retention of children with. Now let us first understand the first category which is talking about the urban deprived children. Now urban areas have their own certain kind of concerns. There are children who are belonging to the poor families but besides being poor they are deprived children. Why deprived? Because the parents do not have that kind of time, parents do not have that kind of motivation which can stretch them to the schools. So these parents are generally not worried about whether the children are going to school or not. Why? Because they are struggling to meet the basic needs of the family. So the children are put, generally put to work or the children are left to serve on their own. And these children come under the category of urban deprived children. Now let us understand what kind of special concerns are with these children who are living in the urban areas and are put in the category of urban poor deprived children. Now these are the children which constitute the street children. We need to understand there is a number of children who are living on the streets, maybe with parents, maybe without parents. Then there is a category of children who are rack pickers or who are children of sex workers or maybe children who are sex workers themselves. Then we need to see education of the children living in the urban working class slums. So 
we need to see the children may be themselves working they may be working in industries they may be working in households and they may be working at small places like tea shops etc then there is another section of children who are migrant workers the parents are moving from one city to another city or probably from one locality of city to another locality of city these may be people who are working as construction laborers so the children are also moving with their families now since they are not living at one confined place definitely education becomes an important issue that how to reach these kind of children then there is a section of children which are child beggars they are left to fend for food also on their own now all these categories come under the broader category of urban deprived children there have been different studies which have been made and they have shown or indicated that there is a growing problem of schooling of poor children in urban areas now there could be different reasons for the same number one reason is multiplicity of the administrative units when it comes to the urban section there are different units which are working in the same direction now since it there is a multiplicity happening so at times there is a lack of planning which is there there is a lack of coordination which is among them and which hampers the access and retention of children in the schools then secondly there is lack of micro level planning and coordinated implementation thirdly there is a heterogeneous community from the earlier discussion we all can understand there is a heterogeneous community of the children who are living in the urban slums or probably who are living in the urban areas are poor and deprived and all of them need different kind of interventions so as to bring them to school and so as to hold them in the school then there are ill equipped government schools now these are the children who cannot afford a certain kind of fee structure so generally they are working or they are studying in the government schools now and we all understand and we all know what is the status of our government schools since these schools are ill equipped they are not able to hold the children for long then another factor which is has been blamed is the poor quality of teaching now it's a web if the teaching doesn't happen in a good manner the children are not going to come to the school if the children are not coming to the school the teachers are also not feeling motivated enough to indulge into good teaching but as teachers we need to really understand and appreciate that a teacher is a teacher and we need to always indulge in our teaching with a similar kind of motivation then there is another factor which is lack of infrastructure the schools do not have that kind of infrastructure which can accommodate a large number of children there are schools which have small classrooms but the number of children who should be in that classroom are a large number so they are not able to put them all in the same classroom so the children do not feel nice about these things they feel suffocated and many of them drop out of the school even after making an enrollment in the school then another important factor is there is a lack of authentic database on out of school children how these children can be brought to school only if we know children who are out of school so a database needs to be prepared along the same lines but at present there is a lack of authentic database so efforts need to be made in this direction then there is a severe shortage of space for opening new schools the urban areas are already having a crunch for living so there is a small space available for opening new schools there is there are very shortage of space so new schools are not happening in the urban areas to an extent to which they are needed now what kind of efforts are required or what kind of efforts can be made in this direction so that we can improve access and retention of the urban deprived children in the schools one they require a long term support this is the most important effort which needs to be made in this direction probably through teachers or through counselors or some other kind of personnel the schools need to make that kind of arrangement that these children are provided a long term support we need to understand the background from which these children are coming they are coming from backgrounds where the parents are least bothered whether they are going to school or not whether they are getting education or not so the parents since the parents are not accommodating to the needs of the child the school needs to provide that kind of support a long term support so that not just they enter into the school system but they are able to retain in the school system they do not drop out easily 
and that can happen only if there is a long term support which is being provided to the children then secondly there is which flows from the first point is individualized personal attention now this is something which they are missing at home the urban deprived children are missing this attention from the parents at home so if the teachers or other personnel in the school are giving them individualized personal attention to understand the needs of these children to understand the circumstances of these children definitely the children are going to feel more at place in the school and that is going to lead to improvement in access and retention of the children in the schools uh, the schools can also make certain kind of flexible strategies to bring these children to the school the strategies flexibility could be in terms of the timings the strategy flexibility in could be in terms of the curriculum the transport needed and if these strategies are made which are flexible according to the needs of the child the there are better chances that this child will be able to hold himself or herself in the school now what efforts have been made by sarv shiksha abhiyan sarv shiksha abhiyan has categorically made efforts like education guarantee scheme and other strategies like alternative and innovative education this egs program or aiep program is giving its own results but they can give the desired results only if the people who are making these available to the children they have that kind of motivation and they have that kind of faith in the system also or faith in those strategies also now these alternative and innovative education are not the normal day to day schooling which happens in the normal formal schooling system they are adapted to the needs of the child that the child may be working so the definitely there could be certain kind of curriculum adaptations or the adaptation in terms of the timings which can be made so that the children are able to come to school and attend proper classes then another factor could be the non government organizations assistance for the same see the government can reach to the masses yes agreed but the non government organizations can reach the masses even at a deeper level so wherever possible the non government organizations assistance should be seeked to so that these children are brought to the school then there could be other things like education through bridge courses remedial courses national open schooling programs and back to school camps now we need to understand why these kind of things are needed these kind of things are needed because there are different categories of the children which are in the category of urban deprived children there may be children who enrolled themselves in the school did some kind of education for 2 3 years and then they dropped out now they want to come back to the school again because the government also wants them to complete basic education or complete a certain level of education before they move into the world so there could be certain kind of bridge courses which could be developed for them then similarly we know that the parents are not there to help the children in the at homes so certain kind of remedial courses can be planned so that the children are able to pass through their exams and move to the senior classes the national open schooling programs the children who cannot come to the school for x y z reasons they need to be provided certain kind of flexibility in that sense also so national open schooling programs are there wherein the child can seek school education also right from his home then back to school camps now these are certain specific gestures or the specific efforts which can be made by the government so as to improve the chances that urban deprived children come to the school seek education and then they move into the working world or and then they move into the adult world because that's going to equip them better with the life skills that's going to equip them better with the training skills and they are going to be more responsible citizens of the country that was all about urban deprived children now let's move further let's talk about the geographically remote children we need to understand who are these geographically remote children geographically remote children are those children who are living in geographically remote areas probably they are living in hills or probably they are living in coastal areas where the access to education is not that easy so ssa again tried to work in this direction also the ssa framework made provisions for such children again in those forms of education guarantee scheme and alternative and innovative education now these are the things which were similarly mentioned for the urban deprived children also 
See, all these categories of children, whether it's working children or whether it's geographically, uh, children located in the geographically remote areas or it's the urban deprived children, there may be certain kinds of similarity among them and there may be certain kinds of differences among them. So, certain provisions are going to be similar for all of these and there may be certain provisions which are going to differ in all of these categories depending on the need of the child. Now, there are four broad focus areas. Number is, one is whole time community schools for small unserved habitations. Now, we are talking of the geographically remote locations, so they do not have the schools in the required numbers. So, what can be done is, the first and foremost thing which can be done is making arrangements so that there are full time community schools. Now, if there are going to be full time community schools, the chances of bringing the children to the school are definitely going to improve. Secondly, mainstreaming of the children through bridge courses of different durations. The children may have studied till class 2 probably or till class 4 probably and then now they want to move back to the system of education again. So, what can be done because they are they have grown up in age and now they want to move back to that system. So, they can't be enrolled in the lower age group classes. So, what can be done is mainstreaming of these children through bridge courses of different durations. They may be prepared outside the classroom for certain duration. A bridge may be built between them and then they are moved to the mainstream classrooms. Another thing which can be done is making certain developing certain specific strategies for special groups like child labor, street children, adolescent girls, girls belonging to certain backward communities, children of migrating families etc. Now, when we talk of children who are living in remote areas, these are the children which have another subcategories of the children within their umbrella. So, there may be street children, there may be adolescent girls. If they are living in geographically remote areas, parents are not very uh, comfortable about sending them off to far off schools. So, definitely different strategies need to be developed in this direction. There may be girls who are belonging to certain backward communities. Girl education in itself is an issue, but if the girls are belonging to the backward communities or belonging to certain communities, this their education may get even more difficult. So, specific strategies need to be developed for these children. Then there can be innovative programs like, which can be in the area of pedagogic practices, curriculum program management, textbooks and teaching learning materials etc. Now, the children are already in the geographically remote areas. So, they are experiencing different kind of culture, they are experiencing a different kind of life. So, what the normal curriculum which may have been developed for the schools which are working in urban areas or which are working in cities may not be adaptable or may not be uh, copied in the same manner in for those children who are living in the geographically remote areas. We need to make certain kind of innovations in terms of pedagogic practices, curriculum programs, textbooks, teaching learning materials etc. Now, if these changes are made, then the children are going to find themselves more near to the education which is happening in the classrooms. And once the child finds himself comfortably placed in the classrooms, then their chances of access and their chances of retention in the schools improve. Let us move down to the third category which is talking about the working children. Now, these, this is a category which seems to be the most sensitive, the children who are working for money because of different reasons. The children may be belonging to very poor families, the children may be orphans, the children may be street children, the children may be beggars and they may be working in different areas also. They may be children who are working in industries, they may be children who are working in um, households or they may be children who are working or doing some petty jobs like working in uh, tea shops or etc or maybe a puncture shop or anything of those uh, kinds. Now, what becomes dismay about these children is you cannot straight away pull them out from the workplace. Why? Because they are depending for their livelihood, they are depending for the food on those conditions. Even the parents won't agree to that kind of thing that the children are being pulled out of that thing. Though child labor is banned in India, it's an offense that you cannot employ children. But the grim reality is that we cannot easily move out these children from the workplaces. If we intend to, we need to provide certain kind of monetary compensation to the parents, which may not be 
so easy or which may be a economically hampering thing for the government also so even within that system when the children are working we need to think of strategies so that these children are provided certain kind of education in their work sphere also the number one intervention which could be made for the working children is making arrangements for the night schools now just not making arrangements for the night schools we need to really see that the night schools are placed in, or located in a, such a place where these children can come to uh, at night for education also these may include boys and girls both so this should be located in surroundings which are safe enough for the girls also to come at night and attend schools now there are there are a number of night schools which are already working in certain kind of cities maybe in mumbai or uh, those kind of places there are number of night schools which are working many of them are very successful but many of them have not been able to now we need to explore why they have not been able to why they have not been able to is because generally what happens is these schools offer the same curriculum which is offered in the formal schooling in the day schools now we need to understand the needs of these children the community from which these children are coming who are attending the night schools and the life which they are living is very different from those children who are coming to the schools in the day setups so there needs to be a different curriculum for the night schools a different curriculum needs to be developed for the night schools if the curriculum is adapted to the needs of the children the children are going to feel more affectionate towards the school more responsible towards the school and they are going to feel that they are going to learn much more from the school definitely they are going to move more to the school so access and retention what the basic objective of all these efforts is that would definitely improve the curriculum should be made in such a manner that the children are able to achieve the life skills so the curriculum should be teaching them life skills the curriculum should be teaching them basic numeracy the curriculum should be teaching them the basic literacy skills now these are the skills and adaptability skills now these are the skills which the child needs when the child moves to the world the child is already in the world because he is working but he can improve his chances of other things if he is adapted more to these skills then lastly there can be trade based training now we are already saying that they are working definitely agreed they are working but if you are giving them a trade based training their chances of increasing their salaries or increasing their earnings are going to be much more so let's make the education according to them let's make the curriculum according to them if we make those changes in the curriculum then this kind of curriculum would definitely serve the purpose of improving the skills improving their skills on the job in which they are engaged and enhance their chances of higher earnings see ultimately what is the objective of education ultimately the objective of education is to draw out the best in the child to make him more adaptable to life now life doesn't includes only the textbook knowledge the life includes the other skills which are needed to earn which are needed to um live your life so these kind of things would definitely help the child because the child is going to be more accustomed to the way the world is working the child is more equipped in terms of the life skills and the child is equi more equipped in terms of the trade skills and the chances of his improving his life get better if the child is equipped with certain kind of basic education so now today we have discussed about the urban deprived children the working children and the children who are living in the geographically remote areas now these three categories of children have certain kinds of similarity and there are certain kind of differences also so there were certain strategies which were similar like alternative and innovative education the education guarantee scheme so these kind of efforts were similar also but there were different efforts also or there were different strategies also like for when we talked about the working children we talked about the night schools for geographically remote children these kind of strategies won't work so we need we make a strategies or the government makes its own strategies based on the conditions of the children if they are living in geographically remote areas a certain alag set of strategies are going to be developed if they are living in the urban areas but they are belonging to the poor deprived category or they are living in the slums then other kind of strategies would be developed so depending on the needs of the child different strategies are developed the ultimate aim being 
bringing all the children into the ambit of education so that all the children get certain kind of education depending on their needs depending on their requirements and depending on what their future holds for them thank you all